and I'll give the floor to Ryan Hassan, who has clapped for the idea of giving himself and everyone else a little more time. The, the yes, <laughs> Executive Director of NGO Forum on ADB. Just give me a few seconds. Let me line this up. Uh, Done. Siddharth, you're going to get no seconds. You're just going to begin when your time will start. Can okay. everyone hear me? Yes, we can. All right. So I'll just get started. Um, I titled it Bangladesh Debt Crisis, Choking to Death in the Time of COVID-19. A bit of irony. You know, we're choking for a respiratory disease. We're choking out of debt. We're choking out of pollution, so seemed appropriate. So the lockdowns were enforced on March 26. Um, 13 million people went out of work with no fallbacks. It's a country of 170 million people, so high population density. And Bangladesh is considered the 14th most corrupt among 180 nations surveyed by Transparency International. So. All my previous speakers, when they're talking about projects and financing and economy, it's good to, for the audience to bear that in mind that the financial system is very, very corrupted and it has been so for over two decades. So getting right development outcomes has always been a challenge. Where we are globally in terms of debt, as of September 2019, the Global debt stands at $263 trillion. It's being considered the fourth wave of debt. Uh, the first wave was in the 70s in um, Mexico and then the Latin American debt. And then you had uh, the debt, the rise in global debt before the financial crisis of 2008. Um, and now at 2010, it is being called the fourth wave of debt. And it has never been this high ever in the history of the world. Uh, which basically points to 7.7 .7 billion people leading down to each individual having a $32,500 of debt on their shoulders. And what that means for an individual in Bangladesh who's um, a wage laborer means that they have to do multiple, multiple jobs just to make ends meet, just afford food, just to afford rent, just to afford health care. And we are pushed into this gig economy reality for the vulnerable and the poor, not only for Bangladesh, but I think for all people in the world uh, who are not, who are struggling with the breadbasket. So, and I would recommend this reading. It's a, it's a World Bank report which just came out on uh, global waves of debt. It's available on PDF um, if you do a Google search around it. Uh, the presentations with uh, Bangladesh Working Group. So. If you guys email them for sources, they'll, uh, I give them permission to pass them on to you. Coming back to the country, external debt in Bangladesh has increased to $37 billion as of 2019, from $33 billion as of 2018, and this is both public and private debt combined together. And if you look at the graph, uh, just, just, just look at 2018 and 2019, and you see that exponential rise in the trend of global debt. And 2020 is that big mix up year that we're all in. Um, lockdowns, revenue generating, garment sector is shut down. Um, it is, this, this figure is expected to rise. So what does this all mean in terms of real healthcare delivery? I think this statement says it all. This is how far off we are in terms of reaching our people with what they need. There is 0.8 hospital beds for every 1,000 people in my country. And this is a staggering fact, and I want you all to bear in mind that this is the, this is the reality over which uh, we are talking about the debt crisis. So this is a scary little thing I put together. Uh, ADB Active Projects from 2017 to 2020 uh, in Bangladesh. I don't expect you to read all of that. The reason why I put it there in this format is just to give you the vivid scale of the number of projects which are operating and the government has taken on these loans. So these include uh, grid expansion, Dhaka Mass Rapid Transit Development Projects. If you just let your eyes rest on it, 
you will see different kinds of projects popping up at you and most of them are in the transport and energy sector and a splatter of agricultural projects. And it doesn't end there. So as Monoir was pointing out to the international loans that we have taken on and the sheer bulk size of it, and this is just 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. And that gives you a scale of ADB's grip inside the country from 1973 till 2020. A full list of this is available. I can provide it to you. If anybody wants to look at each project more carefully, feel free to reach out to NGO Forum on ADB. So uh, what has been ADB's experience in Bangladesh, at least from civil society point of view, we've seen development projects in Chokoria, Cogs Bazar, destroying forest land and leading to high salinity for incidents of very harmful shrimp cultivation. We've seen, um, rice farmers, small scale farmers wiped out in the name of crop diversification for cash crops, eventually leading to a high valuation of land in private hands. Uh, we've seen atrocious human rights abuses of Garo communities in Modupur because of ADB projects. We've seen over 2 million people displaced in Kulna Joshua drainage rehabilitation project back in the 90s. So the experience has been super, super bitter. And well, a lot of you have uh, previous speakers are pointing towards investments in the energy sector and ADB has not let that go. They've been very active in the Bangladesh energy sector for quite a while. And one of the most pivotal roles that they have played is privatizing and reforming the Bangladesh laws around energy in order for multinational corporations uh, to come in. And this was no, uh, more evident in the Fulbari movement and ADB's pivotal role in moving the government from away from BAPEX and Petrobangla and moving more towards multinational corporations for that particular project. Obviously, there was a social movement and a resistance and ADB pulled out. Um, so the way in which ADB has played around with the Bangladesh economy has been through technical assistance policy loans, which basically reform laws. Uh, it, it has coerced Bangladesh government's uh, Bangladesh bank with structural adjustment programs. It does direct lending to the government for standalone projects. And it also does a lot of private sector led operations through its non-sovereign lending arm. So where was ADB in health infrastructure? And this is a loan which is approved, I think last month, and it's a big one. It's a $500 million loan to bolster the efforts of the government to manage the impact of the novel coronavirus. And once you go to the ADB website for this particular loan, there's this beautiful paragraph. I mean, it resonates with so much of goodwill. The loan is expected to benefit 15 million people poor and vulnerable in Bangladesh. 1.5 million workers, mostly women in export-oriented industries will receive extended salary support, yada, yada, yada. Um, the government social protection programs will be bolstered up for old age people. Uh, it will reach 100 of the poorest local governments. I mean, this is like a dream come true for $500 million. But then you've got to ask yourself, since 1973, where the hell were you all these years? And in answer to that question, and this is in the ADB country profile for Bangladesh, if you look at the red bar, that's all the projects which ADB has funded rounding up to $24 billion, that's 772 projects. The most intensive sector has been energy with 119 projects and transport another 119. But I want you guys to look at the last bar, which is health. And the number of health projects over the last 30 years of operations was only 31. And the total amount of money spent in investing in health in Bangladesh by the Asian Development Bank is only $388.76 million. And if you looked at the previous slide, the COVID-19 response alone is $500 million, which shows you the scale of ADB's interest in the health sector of this country, especially the public health sector. Going back to that idea that 0.8 hospital beds are available for 1,000 people. Now coming to the AIIB in Bangladesh, and I was just looking at um, projects specifically approved post 2016 till 2019. Most 
most of them has been looking at distributed uh, at uh, it's a it's a gasification of the country. So you you're looking at system upgrades, electricity grid upgrades, but mostly for a gas infrastructure power generation system. So the standalone project, which we have monitored very closely with Clean and the Bangladesh Working Group, the Bhola IPP, um, was a $60 million investment in 2018. Uh, then you're looking at a lot of road projects. Um, the ones which were approved in 2018 are actually smaller loans. Just to scope whether these roads are feasible, I want you to dwell on the Silet to Tamabil Road upgradation, upgradation project 2018. And I want, to, I want you guys to bear in mind the map which Nora showed of the Belgian road, which cuts through Bangladesh. And um, it's very, very interesting, and I'll come, to, I'll come to that in a bit. The first one is the COVID-19 Active Response Expenditure uh, Support Program, CARES, which is $250 million. It's co-financed with the ADB loan of $500 million. So specifically from these two regional development banks, you're looking at $750 million. And I'm sure there's some World Bank assistance coming in for that as well. Then you have another project, which is co-financed, $250 million on Dhaka Sanitation. And then the big ticket one is the Silet Tawambil Road Upgrade Project for $404 million, which was approved last month. Now this road directly fits into the Belgian Road Initiative. And this project has been approved behind closed doors in a time when nobody knows what the project design is. I, I doubt if the negotiations were done in an equitable manner for the Bangladesh government to understand the geopolitical ramifications of this road project. So coming back to Bangladesh debt servicing realities, in the current fiscal year, 2020, the government has kept aside one point. $85 billion for external debt servicing. And this was, uh, obviously it's an increased number from last year, which was $1.2 billion in principal and $570 million in interest. And this is the ERD, our Economic Relations Division, uh, their figures that uh, currently we are looking at $845 million from the current year to be used for debt servicing. It is being expected that by 2020, the Bangladesh Overall debt will rise to over $40 billion. Very, very scary. And to this end, IMF responded. And IMF came in, uh, as uh, Mehdi Bai's slide showed in the beginning, with a $732 million emergency assistance fund straight aimed at the Bangladesh Bank to keep it from sinking completely. And according to the IMF, um, it, 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 the, the tone of the messaging is positive, but do look at the fine print. According to the IMF, once the crisis abates, that is the COVID-19 crisis, the authorities are committed to refocus on addressing banking sector problems. So we have deep banking sector problems. 